Hello everybody, this is Jack Askew from Teaching ES Online and joining me today to talk about online English teaching and also about an exciting new resource for online teachers is James Hayward. Now James is a co-founder of both Turks Learn English and Off to Class and we connected some time ago and his business partner Chris actually wrote a blog post for Teaching ES Online last year. So I'm really excited to welcome James to Teaching ES Online today. James, thank you for joining us. Okay, thanks very much for the opportunity to, to chat with you. Great. So, um, firstly, before we talk about your two sites and your tips for English teachers, could you just give us a little bit more information about your background and what, what you did before you created these two sites? Okay. Uh, well, I guess my teaching career started about seven or eight years ago. Uh, prior to that, I'd worked in a, a number of different industries. They didn't really suit me. And uh, I did the backpacker thing and took off and, and found that I really loved uh, a Istanbul, uh, which took me to teaching, and I really very quickly developed a love for teaching. Uh, so I did a very common uh, thing where I started in a language institute. Then, as I gained more experience, I was able to get a job at a school in Istanbul, and I started teaching uh, middle school students, essentially a literature based course, but with a lot of language input in it as well. So, yeah, that's, that's I guess, my, my teaching experience. Great. And so th this all led you into, firstly, Turks Learn English, which was the first site you and Chris created. Absolutely. And, and what happened, as a lot of people know, if you're working as a, an expat uh, overseas as a teacher, you'll often find and you, you receive requests for private students. And of course, private students can often be more lucrative. They often pay more than the day job. And uh, we actually got to the point, well, I actually got to the point where I was doing more private, spending more time teaching private students than I was almost at the school. Uh, and because of this, I really enjoyed teaching private students. There was perhaps greater variety in the type of student I taught. Uh, certainly there was more independent for us to, both the student and I, to study different aspects rather than a school curriculum. And I just found it more rewarding. Uh, and so living in Istanbul and being the enormous city that it is, and desperately wanting to stay, I really needed to find a way to maximize the number of private students, but reduce the amount of time that I spent commuting. And, you know, I, I think that relates to anybody who teaches. You want to teach perhaps as much as possible. You also have to prepare for those lessons so that if you need to be traveling physically between, you know, a student space to the next student's office, for example, that takes a lot of time. And Turks to, TurksLearnEnglish.com was really born out of that, the idea that online teaching is increasing every year. Uh, people are getting onto it in a really big way, and, and it seems to be a very rewarding uh, educational learning environment. And so that was really what led us down the path to, to build our own website and allow current students uh, to come online and then to, to, I guess, broaden our market and be available to a wider number of people who weren't actually located in Istanbul. Fantastic. And, um, you know, obviously your website with the name Turks Learn English is, is specifically targeting people in Turkey, right? Yeah, we've actually had a, a reasonable amount of, of, of odd feedback, or actually, I guess, negative feedback about the name. Um, it's so basic, but it's exactly what it is. It's, it's, it was a site built for Turks Learn English. Uh, most of my teaching experience has been with Turks uh, from age between about seven and 70. Uh, the majority of them are, are between 8 and 12 years old in the middle school range. And, you know, I was at the time living in Istanbul and I'm still there quite a lot. Uh, and so, you know, that's who we really wanted to market to. A, because that's where I had my experience. And, you know, I do believe as a teacher, if you want to go online, you probably want to, to have a niche. I think it's important to, you know, become not the expert, but as as you know, as good a teacher as you can be for a particular market because the English language market is enormous and I don't believe that you can teach to anyone and everyone. So we really wanted to create a, a focus there. And by creating TurksLearnEnglish.com, uh, we were able to have the site built. It's a bilingual site, so obviously in both Turkish and English. Um, and it really enabled me to, I guess, gain the students for whom I was going to be perhaps a, a better teacher. Fantastic. So yeah, to just have that focus and, and to be able to learn so much about that particular learner, you know, that, that the group of learner and, 
and be able to know exactly what mistakes they make, what they need to do, their mentality and everything else that, that goes with being a good teacher and knowing exactly what to do to help that, that type of student. I think so. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's really important. I, I do believe that, you know, we're all taught as teachers that you need to personalize uh, your classes as much as you can because it's very difficult to learn whatever it is if it doesn't relate to the person. And so having a love of Turkish culture, living in Turkey and knowing enough about the Turkish language, there are huge advantages to be able, for me to be able to become the online teacher for Turks who want to learn English. Um, for sure. Fantastic. And you mentioned before that you have a lot of people in that, that middle school age range. Yes. What, what is it like teaching children online? It's something that I've, I've never done. Yeah, I, you know, uh, I think being a, a, a teacher for younger age groups anyway has comes with its own challenges. Uh, and, you know, a lot of those seem to be around concentration uh, levels, you know, motivation, ability to do particular tasks. But one of the enormous advantages of taking them online is this generation uh, is perhaps not as capable as we think of using technology. However, their desire to use it is enormous. And you have the ability as a teacher online to take this from just a play instrument where they're surfing the internet and constantly playing games to an educational instrument. And, and it's an incredibly powerful tool once the parent sees that in action. And some of the amazing things that I've had about, obviously, you know, the obvious thing is you are teaching one-on-one -on -one or perhaps one as one teacher to a smaller group. You're, you're not teaching 25 students online. But what happens is the student's focus is increased enormously because there's not somebody at the other side of the class throwing a piece of paper. You know, nothing's going to get thrown out of the window. Nobody's not going to knock, hopefully, on your, your classroom door. And so the child's focus remains incredibly strong throughout the lesson. I also think it can be incredibly interactive now with the programs that you have. You can draw on the screen. You have the power of everything available to you on the internet. So you really do have a very strong, you build a very strong rapport. Um, but I guess most of all, the concentration level. Uh, you know, I have several students whose parents have advised me that there's attention deficiency disorders. Um, but I've never concentrated on that simply because the attention has been solely on uh, the, the, the screen and what's happening. And so when the child's you know, classroom is reduced to what's in front of the camera, it's an incredibly powerful tool. Uh, you also have to take you know, some, some precautions. Uh, obviously, you need to be in a quiet space. Uh, you can't have the iPad unless the child is learning on the iPad. You don't want extra electronic devices. You need to advise the parents that, you know, the pet can't be in the room. Um, you, know, you can't just pop in to see how the lesson is going. Well, I find, you know, I don't advise that. Telephones are a no-go. You know, the, the, the attraction to WhatsApp and just checking your Facebook, you know, they're kids. Um, but if you can create the right learning space, then the online environment is incredibly powerful. That's so interesting, James. Yeah. And, uh, you know, just looking at the, the positive ways of using technology to actually bring the, the focus onto the lesson, you know, and look, thinking about it in that way instead of thinking about it and not being able to be there to, like, you know, discipline them or, or whatever. Um, I know with Zoom, though, the platform that you use, there is a, a feature, right, to, to kick people out of the, the meeting for 10 minutes yeah, or so? Yeah, you know, I mean, discipline is always going to be an issue with young learners. You know, they, they probably have greater mood swings and motivation swings than an adult student. And naturally, a lot of the time, the motivation to have started these lessons naturally comes from the parent. The parent wants Johnny uh, to improve uh, his speech. And perhaps you can also supplement what's happening in the curriculum at school. Um, and, you know, it's natural. Sometimes kids come on. They are busy kids. They have extracurricular activities. This is another thing that they are having added into their day. And it's always after school uh, or possibly on the weekend. They're not always in the mood to do that. And I think what you need to be as in the classroom, you have the advantage. Uh, you, sorry, as not in the, the, the traditional classroom, you have the advantage that you're just dealing with the one student. You get to know that student's moods and personality very well and so you develop a whole series of tricks uh you know to divert attention from time to time you have to leave your lesson plan you have to remain flexible but you know when worse comes to worse 
you can kick the kid out of the classroom. Um, <laughs> and you know, this when obviously for any teacher who uh, teaches students, contact with the parents is paramount. And that's one thing I would advise for anybody who wants to teach uh, students is parents love to receive feedback. You know, they want to know that their kid's going okay, and they also want to know when the kid isn't doing so well. And you can balance any negative feedback that you need to give to a parent by making sure that you stay in contact, that we did this today. Very small emails are enough to make a parent feel satisfied. And, you know, one of the most amazing things about teaching young children online is that I always offer a trial lesson first, uh, naturally free of charge. Because if the child hasn't met me before, which is always the case now, uh, it's great to have the parent in the room because who is this teacher? This isn't, you know, my teacher at school. And the child needs to feel, feel comfortable. But because of the power of the internet, or because of the power of online and the child sitting in front of the computer, within three or four minutes, the child actually forgotten that his own parent is in the room. And the parent is A, able to slip away quietly and the lesson continues. And B, the parent is genuinely always in a rush to tell you after the lesson, that's the first time, or that's, I had no idea that he spoke or she spoke English like that. Because when we go on holidays, he never says anything. He won't, you know, he won't ask for anything in the shops. He won't order any food. And so this is, this is a really empowering thing for kids because they don't have you know, the cleverest or the most fluent student behind them. They don't have their parent actually, you know, once the parent's out of the room, there's no pressure. It relieves a lot of the pressure that some students feel uh, in the classroom environment. So it's, it's a really good thing. And, and as I said, if the parent can hear or see their child speaking English online, this is, you know, this is the ultimate. It's, it's putting English into action and it's a great thing. Yeah, I, I noticed that with, with adult students as well, that once they're in the, the comfort of their own home, in their room, there's, there's not that pressure as you go into like a traditional classroom setting where everyone feels nervous about speaking that language. And you can create this environment online where you completely help your students to relax and express themselves in ways that you know, they don't normally do in, in different settings. Um, yeah, I, I'm sorry to interrupt. I would just add you're, you're quite right about the physical setting. Um, the fact that you are often, well, the child is normally uh, in his room, or his or her room, or a quiet place in the house. Sometimes even the, the ability of online, the, you know, the great thing about online teaching is sometimes they take it in mum or dad's office because they've gone from school to the office and they can still take the lesson. The reality is you've got a whole lot of different realia, as it's called, to play with online as well. If you're in that kid's bedroom, you imagine that when you're teaching possessive adjective and the kid's quite young, you know what you do? You just say, turn around. You know, that stuff on the shelf over there, is that, go and get some of your stuff to show me. And that, there's nothing more powerful than actually having the child being able to physically pick something up, whether it's Lego or, you know, the doll or the board game. It's, it's an incredibly powerful tool for them to, you know, to personalize the lesson in a way that no classroom, you know, teachers unfortunately have to cater again uh, to a large number of students and online teaching, it's a lot more powerful. Great. So um, we've talked a lot about the, the way you conduct lessons and, and all about, also about your background. Now, a lot of people will be thinking, how do you find these, these, these kids to you know, fill up your schedule with teaching? And, sure. and obviously, this is a, a complex, a very complicated and long you know, discussion to have. But can you just give some like, ideas and some tips that you have and what's worked well for you to bring in people into your online learning environment? I think, first of all, if you're going to do it as a teacher, you need to be confident that it's going to work. When you tell the parents, what I made a decision to do was to actually say, I'm going online. I love teaching your child. I want to continue, which I did. But the commute that I had in a city like Istanbul can be enormous. It's, it's tiring. And it's also tiring for the parents, you know, to, to make sure that the kids on, you know, to, that the kids at home when you're going to arrive and this kind of thing. So it didn't really mu take much because I said, I, I'm not going to do the face-to-face -face lessons anymore. I want to bring the children online. And so I was at an advantage, and I'll talk about perhaps gaining new students in a minute, but uh, to take my current students and bring them all online. And I was able to keep all of them but one. 
So once they got online, it was new for them anyway. They still had me as their teacher and then we were able con to continue. Um, and that led to, you know, kids being happy and content. They told their parents and you have to remember that parents, you know, go to their kids' tennis lessons and go. To, and so the word, word of mouth has been without a doubt the strongest uh, manner in which we've been able to gain new students. Um, and if I look back now, the reality is that 90% of our students have come from word of mouth. Now, that said, a landing page and the time spent, just put that landing page in. It doesn't take much. And that's what I would really say to any teacher is be confident that, yes, you will need to put some groundwork in, but the ground, the, the landing page that you have and a teacher's ability to, you know, if a parent has told another parent about me, and I'm an unknown entity, they can go to that website and they can see, okay, he's legit. And uh, from there you have your contact details, you know, a, sh a schedule if you want, the ability to log in, to pay online. We put all of those things in, but you will still, parents are parents and they will want personal contact with you. So you'll have emails and a couple of phone calls to organize the trial lesson, but it can happen. And so the current students that we had we took online and that has just continued to grow uh, as, as parents talk to parents, as students talk to students at school, that, that's really just taken on a life of its own. A lot of teachers are obviously gonna say, well, I don't have any students and I want to start online. So your landing page is going to be even more important, um, but it's still, it, it, you, you will need to probably, it's not easy to get online students from nowhere. And that's why I would say, Turks Learn English was a niche. We decided that's who we were going to teach. That's who we were going to market uh, our time at. And we were able to get, by putting together a bilingual website, in our, in our case, students who were uh, Turks who were wanting to learn English. I think there are teachers out there who have the ability to teach every course to every student or the desire to do so. But I do believe that the English market is so large that if they come to a landing page and see that you teach everything from IELTS to TOEFL to business English, academic English, young learners, um, literature, you might, you might be spreading yourself too wide. So I would really suggest the landing page so that you have focus. And then, of course, if you have some money to throw around, you, know, you can start using Google AdWords and things like that. Um, but again, once you land your first student, and that will always be the hardest thing, You've got a satisfied student, hopefully, and again, word of mouth and your landing page becomes really what it is, a way for a student to check the reference that they've been, been given. Yeah, fantastic. Fantastic advice. And it's exactly what I talk about as well. And yeah. especially when, you know, you think about everything that's coming together. So refer, the referrals want to do a few things. They want to check out your website to, you know, check out your pictures, your prices, just to get that feel. And, and they, they can really, you know, within a few seconds make a decision about you as a teacher and your business. Sure. And then obviously the, the trial lesson is that next stage or the, the in email contact before that maybe. But then to go in the trial lesson to say, okay, this is what it's actually going to be like to be fully sold on something. So the, all those different steps are so important, I feel, when it, it comes to getting different students. Yeah. And I think, you know, uh, one thing I would advise, and this probably is – for any teacher anywhere anytime is keep your contacts you have no idea how important contacts are going to be for you in the future and i can tell you that you might have 700 contacts after several years of teaching both your students details and your parents details uh, at least a telephone number or an email those people are the most powerful tool for you to grow your business because once you have one of them that's all you, you know, that's all you need because it will grow from there. So my advice is to anybody who wants to be successful online, you're operating in an online environment and contacts just store every contact you have in a way that you can retrieve it. It can be an Excel spreadsheet. You don't need, you know, an incredibly strong database software. Uh, you just need to, to really manage that incredibly well um, and keep your notes. Uh, you know that, that I always advise you to know, contacts are the single most important thing you can do to build your student base. Great. Um, yeah, I wrote about that. I think about six months ago, and I'll, I'll leave that the link to that post as well in the the show notes. Sure. Um, 
Good. Let's talk about planning now because you've got a very exciting new site called Off to Class. Um, and you're going to start sharing your screen now, right? Yeah. To, yeah. to show everyone what this yeah, is like. Okay. Yep. I'll, I'll give this a go. So uh, we started um, once we were uh, doing quite well with the number of students that we had. Obviously, the grind for almost every teacher, as much as you enjoy teaching, is the preparation time. And we really feel that this is a pain point, not just for myself, but for any teacher that if there's some way to reduce the amount of preparation time you have, then you can dedicate more time to teaching. Or if you want to even go and do that extra yoga class tonight, you don't have to be sitting at home thinking about the following morning's lessons. So I really sat down and thought uh, with my business partner, okay, you know, I've been teaching for so long, I need to get the 80-20 rule into action and we need to start building a lesson plan that will teach the present continuous to 80% of the students, 80% of the time, and really work. Always allowing for the different students to come online, always being ready you know, to be adaptable and flexible when it happens. So now when I plan lessons, uh, so first of all, we decided to start a site, A, because I needed somewhere to store all of these lesson plans online and share them with the students on the screen, and B, we thought, you know, it's a, this, this could be a great way to allow other teachers to find, you know, we wanted to share it with the teacher community out there, uh, especially because online teaching is growing and there are different needs for us online than in a traditional classroom because everything has to be so visually enticing. So now when I plan a lesson, uh, what I do is I sit down and I, I try and plan the lesson that can be used you know, for 80% of the students any time. And I'll just show you what we, what we developed is, at the moment we're in beta, uh, so you know, we've still got a long way to go, but at the moment we, we're, we're operating in a beta mode, so anybody can come in and, and request an account from us. Uh, but to show you, we've divided up the lessons into particular areas. You can use a drop-down list and simply go in and, for example, today maybe I'm going to attempt some and any with my students. So I'll go in, I'll take a preview, and hopefully the teacher can say, yep, these are my objectives, this is what I'm going to do, and you can close that, go back, and actually launch the lesson. So what happens next is the lesson appears on the screen, and on the left-hand side you'll see teacher notes, uh, obviously for the teacher. You may or may not need them. And on the right-hand side is what, if you've shared your screen, the student is going to see. And so we've kept it quite simple. As you click through, uh, you can then focus the student immediately. Now, I've taught this lesson on several occasions, so I'm going to toggle the screen and take it to a full screen for you. And if you're my student, I'm probably going to start with a simple activity to ask you to perhaps to read these sentences and match them to the pictures. And then we hope that as we go along, we're going from more controlled activities with some grammar explanations, and then we'll go on into some gap fills, and hopefully as the lesson progresses into something which is more of a free activity uh, towards the end. Now, we also understand that people are teaching different learners. Some people don't want really a grammar table, so, you know, that's fine. I'll skip that for certain students, uh, and some students really do want to. Some students are happy to do, you know, 30 gap fill activities or a matching activity. Uh, we've tried to add a lot of visuals in, uh, not in these slides that I'm showing you, but there generally are, especially at the lower level, uh, you know, the lessons where you first start with possessive adjectives, uh, subject pronouns, object pronouns. We have a lot of visuals in the lessons. Uh, we try and do very, you know, gap fills, mix and match, uh, correct the sentences, give them optional things. And as I said, that, that's really how it, how it works. Um, you can also add the student in an, as an account. So even if you want to see the teacher notes, we have a function on the website for you to authorize a student. So it's very simple. You can go in and give the child a login sorry, the student, a login and a password, you give them that and they log in on the same area of the site, but they will only see, once they log in, this section. So you can have both the notes 
and the lesson content. The student will only see the lesson content. And as you flick through, forwards or backwards, the student will only is a, is a passive observer, so you've got full control of what's happening on the screen. Uh, another thing is that if you're using perhaps a touch screen or you know it works on Skype, we've tested in different systems. If you're using it, for example, with Zoom, uh, and you have annotations, you can always use uh, the annotations, and you can actually start doing things like drawing on the screen, which can be incredibly powerful because again you can focus the student uh, extremely quickly uh, to particular areas and that, that always works uh, quite well. Um, yeah, so that's really how it works with that. If I finish the lesson, then you know I can come out, close the session, I'll go back to the teacher's page, and then perhaps it's time for another lesson or we're looking at today. So that's essentially what we've done uh, and we're encouraging you know teachers to come on and and use it and offer any feedback that they can. Yeah, so th thanks James for showing us that. This, it's got so much potential for, I mean, a lot of the lessons we saw there were grammar lessons, but you can think about, you know, adding all different types of lessons for so many, for so many different types of students. And as you talked about before, you know, this 80-20 rule of having, having, spending less time on preparing for lessons, but still being as effective, you know, and to, to, to get everything that you need to do. and. What, we, what you talked about before as well about having a specific group of students really helps with that too. Um, so I'm sure you've got some big plans for off to class in the future. Yeah, I think, you know, now I'm just, all I do is spend my lesson days writing lesson plans and then we convert them into a visual uh, aspect that you see before you. We, we test it with um, students. Naturally, we find a few things that don't work so well that we thought would be great. Uh, images need to be changed. And so we you know, are continually making it as, as, as good as we can. Um, the uh, ability for teachers to be able to, we have a submission button, a uh, free text at the bottom of every slide when they're teaching. So if they find an error, if there's an image that perhaps is not suitable for a particular culture, things that we haven't thought about, the teacher can actually put it in there and we will action that as, as soon as we can. So that's been a great way to really make the lessons better. So we've got the focus on building the product. Um, you know, it takes a while for people to learn English, but as I said, if we can get the right lessons up for present continuous prepositions and this kind of thing, and then move past grammar, um, you're right, thematic-based lessons around vocabulary, and we have started doing those. Um, so we realize the importance of that. And ultimately, if we could do literature-based courses around, you know, the, the 30 most popular books taught in schools today, you know, that, that, that there's no end to this. And so I guess what we're trying to do is get a base number of lessons where teachers will really find our website helpful. Uh, and then, you know, if they're having days where I'd like to teach something new, we'd really like to give them to the point that they can just start coming through and scrolling and, and just, this looks good. I'm going to give this a try. Uh, that's that's really where we'd like to get to. But yeah, it's it's in you know the number of lessons that we actually need to create is daunting, but it's you know it's it's exciting as well. And and I've just completed writing uh, 25 lesson plans on modals. Uh, it's one of our smaller series. It's going to be one of our larger ones hopefully by the end of the month. So yeah, we're 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 getting there slowly. Wow, yeah, modals. It's, uh, it's not easy to write about, is it? There's a lot of things you need to think about with modals. Absolutely, but that's another great thing. And I mean, these, writing these lesson plans has actually started to make me a better teacher because for a long time, I guess I was set in the ways that I did things. But this is actually making me think about how would other teachers, it can't just, this site can't just, won't work if it's just about how I would teach. So that's why user feedback has been so important for us. Uh, and that you know that that's helping me to plan lessons in a better way because there is no ideal way to teach modals uh, for everybody. But we're trying to create lesson plans that can be used by a large number of people with a wide variety of students. Fantastic! Um, and you mentioned for teachers who want to use this platform, what 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 do they need to do exactly? Uh, not much. Um, all they need to do is they come onto the homepage. It's uh, offtheclass.com. And all they need to do is fill in the form on the front. We just like your name, your email. And in fact, we have got, uh, we'd just like to know a little bit about you. That's not compulsory information, but it helps to know, you know, if we know that you're a teacher teaching in Uzbekistan, or you might be a, a parent who's wanting to teach, you know, Czech, 
English with your, your we've got NGOs who have signed up, for example, uh, sorry, not NGOs, but people working with NGOs who are teaching in a very small village. Uh, you know, anybody can sign up and that's all we need. We'll create a login for you, send you your login and your password, and that's all you need. Once you've logged in, you have access to everything that I have access to uh, in terms of the lesson planning. Great. Well, I'll leave a, a, a link below this video. Thank you. Um, James, thank you so much for everything today. It's been incredibly valuable. Thank you. Um, and maybe we could get you on in the future as well. Absolutely. I've, you know, in six months down the track, uh, when hopefully the website's attracting me even more users and I have you know, some, some greater experience with online teaching using this system, um, that would be a great thing. So thank you very much for the opportunity. Great. Well, uh, speak to you soon. Okay. Cheers. Okay. Bye-bye. Yeah.